part two of stories about skinwalkers, shape-shifting black magic wielders of Native American legends. Did you see that in the woods? That man turned into a crow. Grab a blanket, turn off your lights, and get ready for these four true stories. They can turn into anything they want. May or may not be a skinwalker. But I'm not sure what else to call him. Every tale of interaction with a so-called skinwalker always has a few key components. It's something that my experience didn't have. Intense fear, a terrible smell, the feeling that the intent was to do harm. If anything, I felt... I felt wonder, awe, and confusion. When I was about six years old, I spent the night at my great-grandmother's house, which was right next door to my own, where I used to live with my grandparents. I woke up in the middle of the night, I noticed the floodlight out in the back was on, and decided to get up and play with some of my toys, using that light so I wouldn't alert my great-grandmother of being awake by turning the lights on in the room. After a few minutes, I felt the need to look out the window. In the side yard, a youngish man seemed to be looking for something or inspecting one of the young trees near the house. He had black hair that probably should have been around chin length if it weren't so flighty and must. And he wore a full body tan suit that looked an awful lot like a car hat bodysuit. He was somewhat short. If I had to put a value on it, I guess he was about 5'6". He didn't look as big as my grandpa who was 5'8". So that's really the only comparison I can make. But after a few minutes of watching him looking around the tree, he looked up and looked over at me. The look of sheer terror on his face stuck in my mind since then. His jaw dropped and his eyes opened so wide that I could see all the whites all the way around his irises from the distance I was from him. We stared at each other for a few minutes and then he to his left. It looked like he had tripped for a second and was reaching his arms out to brace for impact. Then he just became a deer and bolted. There's no other way to put that. I know it doesn't sound serious, but that's how I remember it. I admitted this to my mother a couple days ago over the phone, and she told me that when she lived there, she had a similar experience, except that it had been a man older than the one I was describing. Rather than looking for something, her shapeshifter had been tromping around on the roof, dancing, until she saw him. Then he turned into a crow and flew off. My younger brother and sister have had similar experiences beyond belief. The four of us have all had strange experiences on that property. Of course, not all involving shapeshifters. But regarding those, we're not Navajo, we're Miami, from Ohio. I like any insight on what anyone thinks these might be. I never knew I encountered a skinwalker, until now. It was early in the summer of 2007. I was 13 and on a camping site. I live in Maryland, specifically Baltimore City, but at the time, I was in rural Maryland on a vacation with friends. We had been hiking out on an unusually cool day, about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and we were having fun climbing and being outdoors. About two hours into our trip, we came across an abandoned campsite. The tent was burned, and the fire pit was smoldering. My friends and I, four of us, left very quickly, only to get briefly lost. My friend Tyler stopped us and pointed out a woman standing in the distance on the tree line. She was very jolty with her movements. She was almost shaking out of her body, as the oldest of us, Mark, who was only 15, he wanted to know if she was okay. 
He took one or two steps forward and under the crunch of a branch, which drew our visual attention away from the woman. A strong smell of biological decay swept over us. The stench was so strong I vomited, and Tyler began to cry. As we ran as fast as possible in whatever direction Mark told us to, never once looking behind us. We made it back to our tent, where all of our parents were waiting for us. We never spoke about this to anyone. Once our trip ended, I became deathly ill, with vomiting, diarrhea, seizures, and hallucinations. Tyler, Mark, and Joey, my friends, they were all fine. I overcame the illness in about a month, and thought I had a bug or some regular cold. A short time later, my family cat of 11 years disappeared on us, not leaving a single trace. Tyler's dog also was gone. About two months after my cat left, I began to have regular nightmares of this woman, and would wake up to the smell of rotten corpses. In time, it passed, and for that I'm thankful. I never returned to that campsite since. What is this? Please help. When I was about 12 or 13, me and my family moved to a house near Malcolm, Iowa. But it was miles away from any other town. We lived in the middle of nowhere, on a very unkept dirt road. The first day we moved in, we felt something was off. And my family has experienced the paranormal a lot in the past and it wasn't uncommon for any one of us to see the supernatural every now and then. About a week into living there, I was left home alone, and eventually my grandma called me. But the phone was cut out halfway through our conversation, so I went back to the couch to watch TV. But then I started hearing arguing coming from the entryway. Thinking it was my parents, I sprung up to help them carrying groceries. But then my dog started barking at the voices, so I listened closer and closer, and heard two men and a woman. I knew these voices weren't my parents, and immediately ran back to the living room. When my parents got home, my dad told me that I wasn't hearing anything, but I knew I was. This made me very frustrated. Sometime later, we found out that the father of the Iowa Chelsea baby, who had raped the mother, leading to pregnancy, used to live there. Eventually we met the neighbors and we had a short talk with them and for the oddest reason they felt it was necessary to tell us that there had been satanic rituals performed at the house and that the last residences had asked them to put their dog down. But when our neighbors got their dog, they seemed to be nothing wrong with it. Soon after we developed a big coyote problem, both in numbers and size, and I started feeling more and more uneasy in the house. A few months after moving in, me and my mother went down to the basement to set down some mouse poison, but we were surprised to find the basement was half full of dirt, and there were bags of lime, which is commonly used to digest bodies when hiding a crime. After finding that the voices were much more common, and I started seeing things in the corner of my eye. I was walking into my bathroom to take a shower, and as I did, I walked by a mirror that was over the medicine cabinet and what I saw made me run back to my room in terror. A woman, a woman with a gray dress on, very pale skin and something black, like a veil but not transparent. I told my parents I saw something, but they again told me I didn't see anything. A few weeks later, I went down to get a soda from the fridge in the entryway and was shocked in horror. I was home alone and was pretty used to paranormal things happening, but what I saw was far from anything I'd ever seen before. A bunch of what looked like gray, brown, and tan clothing, maybe pelts, slumped over a tall human-shaped figure. I could not see any arms or legs because all the pieces of clothing on top of the clothes mound was a deer skull covered in blood and bits of flesh with feathers hanging from the antlers, and it was standing in front of the basement door. I didn't want to tell my parents because I knew they say I was making it up or something, so I kept it to myself and couldn't stop thinking about it for years. The day after I saw it, 
I had a dream about it standing in the backyard, just standing, standing by a large flat rock that was in the corner of our yard. But the house wasn't there, just a field, and it was just standing there. Soon after, we moved out. Because of what was happening, my parents saw what was going on too, but refused to tell me until we were out. I recently told my mom what I saw, and it took a lot out of me. I was crying and trembling in the end, because I've kept it to myself for so long. But I thought about it every single night. Just seeing the thing stand there was much scarier than anything else I've ever experienced. Can someone tell me what this is? Grandma's Forest I was spending a month with my cousins at my grandma's house. It was August, and my cousins' age ranged from 10 to 15, and I was the oldest being 15. I was staying with a 10, 13, and a 14-year-old. We stayed up telling scary stories often, but one night a few weeks in, we decided to make a campfire out back. My grandma's house is in a rural suburb, Neighbors aren't too far when you're driving down the road to her house, but in the backyard, it's thick forest with a man-made path through it. Each house is on a hill, so only part of the basement was actually underground. That isn't important until later though. So we're towards the east side of her yard, in a smallish patch of open land. You couldn't see the neighboring yards from there, and there was probably three quarters a mile to each side of us that belonged to my grandmother. It was maybe 11 at night, and we were playing truth or dare after telling scary stories, and my 14-year-old cousin dared me and the 13-year-old to go walk through the path for 10 minutes or so. I said yes right away, as I wasn't really scared and rather level-headed, but my younger cousin was a bit more hesitant. We didn't bring a flashlight because it wasn't pitch dark yet, and we could see enough to not die. We were walking through the path for about 5 minutes and we could barely see the fire through the trees when we decided to turn. In the middle of the path was a large dog-like creature, hunched over with its front hands an inch from the ground. What I remember most was how its eyes were so fucking bright white, and it was a humanoid dog shaped like a human, with a human-like head, but a dog-like body, but human hands and feet. It looked right at us, and I know I was paralyzed with fear as it dashed away the opposite way from us, towards a creek that ran through the yard. Eventually my cousin and I screamed bloody murder, and the other cousins and my grandma ran to us. I don't remember much here because I was really disoriented and I couldn't think properly. But I did wake up in bed, so I assumed that I was brought up back to the house. All the kids slept in the basement, in a big room with sliding glass doors to the outside, as our room was on the side that wasn't underground. My bed was pressed against a big glass window, and I could see my cousins playing outside down below. The house is in Michigan, so it gets slightly chilly, even in the end of August, and there was a slight breeze, so I put on a jacket and ran to join them outside, skipping breakfast not wanting to miss out on anything fun. When I got down, I could tell they weren't playing, but rather running to get my grandma. Her dogs, both of them, were dead, ripped up. That night, we went to bed early. I woke up at maybe 2 in the morning, because I felt something hit my head. My cousins were all sitting on the double bed opposite me, on the other side of the room. There was one bunk bed and two double beds. The double beds for me and my 14-year-old cousin. They were being quiet and staring at me. The 13-year-old nodded his head towards the window. I froze. They all looked afraid. I turned my head slightly to the side, and I saw a really messed up looking face pressed to the window with gaping eyes looking down at me. I screamed so fucking loud, and it bolted. My grandma called the police after I told her what happened, and they found nothing. 
I went home after that, and I've never been there during the night again. <laughs>